Hey guys, welcome to Wrench to Drive, Coronavirus Edition. Yes, I have a cold. No, not really Coronavirus Edition. WL Toys 12428 Crawler Conversion Edition. Here it is, it's back. Guys, I'm much more optimistic than last time we talked. So, I've had this all apart, made a few changes. <clears throat> Nothing too significant, guys. As you'll see, I've got a full size, uh, full size servo in there, and that's because my uh, WL Toy servo packed it in. The uh, plastic gear is grenaded. Now the uh, the arm just spins, spins freely on its axis. So I was going to do this eventually, guys. I was hoping to actually get some running videos with the regular uh, servo in there, but whatever, things happened. Uh, the one thing, guys, the one thing I can tell you is even before I put this in. I knew that the uh, the WL Toys servo was going to have some trouble with, with the big tires on there. Uh, it's really not that strong. Uh, it's only a matter of time before running big tires kills it. So uh, with this with this torquey little monster here, it actually works really well. It's a 25 kilogram servo. Not super fast, but really good for crawling. Uh, it's working really well. It's a Banggood Special. I think I paid 14 bucks for it. Got it on sale super cheap. Uh, usually it goes for 17 18 something like that. And uh, yeah, this is the first time I put it in, and it works really good. Very impressed. Makes lots of power, lots of torque, and uh, it's not super fast. I'll show you when I when I get it running, but uh, but it's fine for crawling. You know, 100% useful as a crawler servo. Probably not the greatest for a for a high performance car, but not bad otherwise. Another thing I changed, guys. I modified the the front shock mounts. I uh, I added some backwards distance there. And some more uh, mounting holes. As you'll see, I've got the shocks back quite a bit more than they were initially, because the suspension was so stiff. It was very, I was, I was kind of uh, bummed out about that. As you can see, guys, we're getting a, a little better articulation there now. So I basically adjusted the uh, the shock positioning on the front and back to get as much angle as I could uh, on each end. And yeah, we're getting we're getting respectable articulation, guys. I'm uh, I'm quite happy with that. It's uh, you know it's not it's not spectacular, but it's by no means bad. It's pretty much on par with, with anything else. <clears throat> now, since I switched the uh, I had to switch the servo, I also uh, had to throw in a regular radio, and I'm using the uh, the uh, what is it? It's uh, I forget the STX2 Tactic, Tactic I think that's the Horizon brand. Came with uh, oh here's the here's the the radio itself. Looks not bad. It came with the old Arma 4S Outcast. Guys, this radio is a piece of shit. If you are desperate, okay, fine. But I'm telling you right now, this thing's coming out of here as soon as as soon as possible. Basically, I just didn't have a spare receiver kicking around for any of my other radios. So I figured, oh, I'll throw it in there. How bad can it be in a crawler? The lag that everybody talks about is 100% real. And even in a crawler, when it uh, when it does a little glitchy nonsense, it's super annoying, guys. Super annoying. Don't use that radio. So anyways, regular receiver. Anything will work, guys. Anything except this tactic radio. This ESC I'm using because the one I wanted to use, this cheapo crawler ESC here. This is a little $10 unit. Uh, got it really cheap. I thought it was working pretty good when I first was running it, but for some reason, guys, when you, when you go to climb a hill or something, it uh, it'll do a couple of passes up a up a up a slope, and then it stops putting power to the motor. Like it just kind of it seems like your battery's dying, but turns out my battery wasn't dying. It's the ESC doing something weird. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I'm gonna hook up a voltmeter to this thing and and uh, do some checking because I kind of think it's not actually putting out full power. So I put in this this eight dollar special. You've probably seen these around. Uh, it's the it's the super cheap Chinese eight dollar ESC. I think it's supposedly 120 amp or something like that. Which you know you'd have to be crazy to actually run it in a situation where it's going to draw that kind of power. But if you're going to use this in something you know 2s 540 motor, it's it's okay, guys. It doesn't work that bad. I mean. Honestly, it's uh, it's kind of noisy. It it makes this kind of so it makes this kind of hissing sound. It seems kind of odd, but it works perfect. Like I I've run this quite a bit, guys. Probably 
I don't know, at least two or three hours worth. And uh, I've had no problems. I mean, I cracked it open and took a look just to see because they say it's waterproof. And I am pretty skeptical of that claim. It really doesn't look like it's going to hold up if you get it seriously wet. But, I mean, for, for nine bucks, you know, get some, uh, get some goo, just coat the thing, stick it back together, see what happens. I mean, I've done that in the past, guys, like, uh, you know, basically coated an ESC in silicone, and it lasted a long time. Now, granted, that was a Novak, you know, expensive ESC back in the 90s, but, you know, it's some pretty heinous treatment, all things considered, and, I mean, it was waterproof, and it lasted a long time. I mean, it, it did not die in the time I owned it, so... I don't know, you know, I'm thinking I'll coat this thing in silicone and uh, and see what happens if I if I really, you know, decide I care type of thing. But uh, anyways, it works fine. Total piece of junk. But uh, but I'm okay with it. As you can see, I have my, my super cheap 550 motor in there now. And it works fine. That was not even 10 bucks, guys. It's, it's uh, I would say, um, it's 100% on par with the 550 that came in the Red Cat Gen 8. It's, you know, can't really tell the difference speed-wise and whatnot. So, yeah, there you go. So this is this is super cheap guts, guys. This is pretty much as cheap as you can run in a crawler, and it's working fine. I switched the pinion uh, to a 13 tooth. That's the smallest one I had because with these big tires, guys, uh, the stock pinion. I think it's a 17. Um, not acceptable, guys. It's it's just it's geared way too high for crawling. Even for speed, it doesn't really work that well. It's putting a lot of load on the motor. So I put a 13-tooth pinion on there. Um, all these are changes that are going to they're going to cost you a couple of bucks. But, you know, at some point, guys, unfortunately, you got to spend a little bit of money. This is still, uh, even at, with everything I've done to it now, with all the parts and whatnot, this is, uh, what would it be? It would be about 220 Canadian, 230 maybe. Um, I'm going to crunch some numbers and just see, but not very much, guys. Like for a crawler, that's pretty cheap. And when you see some running video, guys, this doesn't work bad at all right now. Like I, it's really improved a lot. Changing the position of those shocks made a huge difference. It's it's much better. And uh, yeah, it doesn't work too bad. So I'm gonna flip it over here. I've also got the proper link on the front now. I got some new steering knuckles going. They're the ones that are on Thingiverse. I just hadn't got around to actually putting them on the crawler yet. And uh, they're they're good. The only problem, guys, is depending on the setup you run, they might rub on the tire. And the way I've made them, I basically made room for for running fairly long screws into there so that you can mount your uh, your links. Um, you know real solid but unfortunately they get in the way of uh, the tires a little bit depending on what you're running so I also made some standoffs uh, because these tires uh, and wheels the wheels are, are the offsets really crappy um, they're just what I had handy so it is what it is and um, you may need to play around a little bit guys that's the point I'm trying to make here is that there may be some farting around to do to get things to work just prop just perfectly uh, I don't know. I'm not sure how much I'll screw around with this, guys, because uh, depending on, on your setup, no matter what I do, it still might not work for you. So, uh, like with the stock WL Toys tires and wheels, this works fine. Um, these There's tons of space. There's tons of room. It's actually uh, it's actually these tires here. These these are the, uh, the, the, uh, the Red Cat stock wheels. So none of the stuff touches the wheels, it touches the rubber on these tires, and as you can see, they stick out quite a bit, guys. Like, they, they're they uh, they're quite a, a beefy unit. They're at least as, I'd say they stick out at least as much as these guys do. Like, there's a lot less uh, angle on these. The angle of the, of the rubber, actually, is it slopes out quite a bit more. And these, the only reason I would expect trouble, actually, is because I don't have foams in them. I wanted them super soft. Uh, with foams... I really don't think these would be a problem because they're actually they're quite ah, tallish. Let's put it that way. They're uh, I don't know. Anyways, it's kind of moot because I don't have any way to test it right now. But uh, maybe I'll stick one on one of these uh, one of these red cat wheels and see what happens. But anyways, point guys is that it's a bit of an adventure getting things to fit sometimes. And what you can do is if you if you have the perfect size screws, you can cut some of the plastic off of the knuckle 
right in there. You can see how it sticks up. There's lots of beef there that you can you can use a moto tool and grind it off or trim it off, whatever. And just get those screws down a little bit and then they won't touch the tires. But uh, the way this sits right now works really good. So it's definitely doable and not doable for a bunch of money. So, you know, not too worried about it. I got these uh, shock mounts on the back axles turned back quite a bit. And I just used, uh, I'm the king of hot glue, guys. I, if I'm fudging something and just trying to get it work, and I use some hot glue to hold things in place. So if you see hot glue all over this thing, there, there. I used it on some of my links so they don't turn. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I use it for, just to keep things uh, working. Oh, this, in case you noticed, it's broken. Uh, it actually didn't break driving. It was uh, being held on by that one screw there. And I accidentally kind of leaned on it wrong, like put a bunch of weight on it and it, it, it ripped the, the, uh, the uh, floor pan. And all I did, guys, was I hot glued it back together because it, it was surprisingly... Um, I don't know, not totally mangled, like it, it totally looked usable, so I just stuck some hot glue in there and yeah, it's, it seems fine guys, it's actually not bad. So some of this stuff, even if you wreck a part, you might be able to get her back together and, and working. Um, oh, so this is an adjustable motor mount for the WL toys, it's just the, the one you can order off, off of eBay or whatever, it's, it, it lets you move the motor side to side. And it works fine. I've, I've used that in the WL toys and in this, and and uh, had to do a little bit more massaging on the uh, on the dust cover. Uh, I'm not sure how much I'll, how much work I'll do to that down the road. It, it might need a little bit of modif modifying, but all I'm going to do when I run this with feeling, guys, is I'm going to use a little bit of white glue and just seal off the uh, the orifices that I'm worried about and see what happens. Uh, I've done that on lots of cars in the past and you know if you have a car that's prone to dust getting in even with the dust cover you just put a little bit of glue on there and you know no big deal and then when you take it apart it just peels off you can cut it with an exacto knife whatever it doesn't you know not a big deal so yeah oh and then the one thing guys I wish I could show you the pinion but it's uh it sits kind of funny so I actually had to turn the spur gear around I just had to had to flip it around 180 degrees no big deal it gives you more distance from the motor depending on how you place it so I just had it set up to line up with the stock uh, pinion gear and whatnot so um, one of those things you might have to play around with uh, let's see so yeah every, everything else otherwise holding up pretty good guys uh, the roll cage is gonna get posted pretty soon I'm pretty happy with how it turned out it's uh, there's a few things I'm thinking about changing but uh, uh, I don't know, I kind of like it. I was doing it more for looks than anything else, and I think it looks pretty cool. You have to let me know what you think. And then I also made a, uh, I made a chassis mount version of it, for those of you that might want to mount it, like the typical Proline back half, or the axial back half, where you screw it right to the body. So I made a, I made a body mounted version of it, in case you're interested in that. And as you can see, actually, with uh, yonder body, uh, I had to, I had it fit all perfect with those other tires. And then when I went to the big guys, I actually had to move the body forward again. So there's a little more gap there than I would like. But, eh, it's not that bad. If it was, uh, if it was mounted to the body, then what would be affected is the, uh, is that cross member I put there to, you know, to strengthen it up and potentially the back mount. So, I don't know guys, I'm kind of torn. I don't, I don't really like the one piece that much. When it's mounted to the body, you have that one-piece body where the back half is, is integral and, and it kind of all just mounts like a normal body. I'm not that crazy about that. I kind of I like the back half to actually be attached to the frame just like it would be in real life. But uh, whatever. I mean, I put up multiple versions. You guys can do whatever you want. And uh, this thing mounts to the chassis. I think I've showed that before, but it works pretty well. Um, this thing's rolled over. It went down the stairs by accident. Um, did about... I don't know, a couple of flips down eight or nine stairs, and uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think anything broke. That might have been what did the servo in, but um, yeah, nothing on the car actually broke. So yeah, it's not it's not a total piece of crap, guys. I've, I've built plenty of uh, 3D printed stuff that you know it didn't take much to break. You put a little load on it wrong, and snap. Well, this thing went down the stairs, tumbly tumbly wumbly, and survived live to tell the tale so yeah anyways oh and in case you're wondering about these red things on the wheels here guys these are just spacers 
because uh, the uh, I had some some one inch offsets or standoffs whatever the things that give you wider wheelbase and these are the nuts from them and they're a little bit long for the standoffs that I 3d printed to use for this application I didn't want a whole inch I wanted a little bit less so that's why I'm using these uh, these spacers here oh actually and comically the one inch standoffs these nuts are actually a little bit short that's uh, one of the problems with them is that they're they're not quite right you can get them on but uh, it's an adventure and it there's not many threads holding them on the front I think it is the back they work fine the front they're they're a little short and it I don't know whether it's the axles are not ideal or the you know the nuts it's stock WL toys axles so I don't know whatever anyways that's why these shiny red uh, jobbies are on there it's not for looks or anything it's just out of necessity temporarily like so yeah there you go guys that's an update and uh, there'll be running video soon guys if I had if I didn't have a cold I'd probably be uh, getting outside today and try and get a few shots but uh, I just don't feel like it what can I tell you I don't feel very good it is what it is guys um, so yeah there you go wrench to drive or drive to wrench <laughs>